What's up, Booktube? It's Leah Cooper, and today I'm bringing you a tag. I think it's, I'm even going to be able to post this on Tag Tuesday, maybe? <gasps> Shocker. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I was tagged by Rhea the Book Finch months and months ago, back in December, um, to do the Bookish Witch tag, and I did film um, a tag of that. I, but and I did that like months and months ago like I did it late I didn't like January or December or something and I just I didn't like how it turned out I wanted to sit and mull over the answers and give better answers so and that's what I did and I think I've come up with like way better answers because I actually thought about it crazy right I will leave a link down below to the original bookish witch video as well as Rhea's where she tagged me so you can look at her answers and um, I'll also leave the questions down below because I only wrote notes to myself with uh, a summary of the prompts, not the prompts themselves. So if you want the exact wording, it's in the description box. Okay, to the first question in the tag is to pick a witchy setting. Um, that's really easy. Like one of my favorite settings in a book ever is the setting in Uprooted by Naomi Novik. So this is a book about a girl who lives in a village that's in this valley with a bunch of other little villages and there's this forest and there's a wizard's tower you can kind of see that on the cover there's the wizard's tower and here's the forest and the forest has been like growing and encroaching on the villages and the wizard is the only thing kind of standing in the path of that and um, our protagonist Agnieszka gets taken by the wizard to be his apprentice and it is such a good book and the setting like the the wizard's tower his little library the the dark forest is so good like the forest is a character in this book and it's so so good um i really love it so that's my favorite little witchy setting question two your favorite magic system so for that i'm gonna go with a book I don't have a copy of. Um, that's The Realm of the Five Gods or The World of the Five Gods by Lois McMaster Bujold. So um, I've been reading a bunch of books set in this universe, one of them being the Penrick and Desdemona series, um, the other one being The Curse of Chalion, which takes place several hundred years after Penrick and Desdemona. This is such an interesting world with such an interesting magic system. It reminds me a lot of the human gods of Guild Wars 2, probably one of the reasons I like really jive with it. I like it a lot. Um, basically, there are five gods, um, the father of winter, mother of spring, mother of fall, daughter of spring, son of summer, son of autumn mother of summer okay it's a father a mother a daughter a son and a bastard <laughs> and they each the the first four represent the four seasons and the bastard represents everything that happens out of season so he's the like the god of um bastards accidents and misfortune these gods are very like much like the gods of tyria in that they kind of exist in another plane from humans and when you die um you're your spirit is passed into the hands of whichever god you worshipped and also like if you're a father you're usually taking taken up by the father the other thing is and this is kind of more where them like so the gods are real um and to some degree they can interject in the lives of humans to more or lesser degrees and where the magic comes in is that there are these demons who escape the realm of the bastard and cross into our world and they can possess a person not necessarily controlling them but they like live inside them and um they can interact and they provide that person with magic so someone who has a demon rider becomes a wizard and there's all this balancing stuff between uphill and downhill magic with wizards demons and um the demons when their wizard dies they pass to a next rider and then really really powerful demons can become ascendant and that's when they like control their rider and usually ride their rider to death and they have to be exercised which is sent back to the bastards realm where they will be destroyed and it's just all really interesting um 
in Penrick and Desdemona, Penrick acquires a demon, which he names Desdemona, and uh, he becomes a wizard. And it's really, really cool what they can do and um, their adventures they go on. In the realm of the five gods, there's no wizards, but at least in this area, but there is a man who uh, devotes himself to the bastard's work um, in an effort to save uh, a noble woman he's kind of been put in charge of educating and protecting he tries to do some um, death magic to save her from an absolutely horrible man but in doing so uh, a bunch of a bunch of stuff happens between the bastard and um, the daughter of spring or the lady I can't remember which one it is the, both of those gods kind of become inter involved in his life and it's fascinating like everything that happens everything he does he's an amazing character who's like so sympathetic like you're just really pulling for him and uh, it, it's great and there's stuff about curses in that one and yeah the world and the magic system is just so interesting it's not super flashy magic or anything but it's just so integral to the world and everyone's daily lives that it's really interesting and very seamless the third question is your favorite witchy tropes so a couple of my favorite tropes are creepy forests um cold weather snow grumpy witches a good example of grumpy witches i didn't pull it out but um would be the witch granny the granny granny weatherwax from like the discworld series oh, i love her and i also kind of love like baba yaga figures in books like the grumpy grandma witch in um the winter night trilogy that one's another one i really like and then another trope i i do love and i do think it's prevalent in, in which stories it's kind of showing up in the forgotten beast of Eld, for example is a uh, women getting revenge love a good revenge story <laughs> the fourth question is to pick a book of magic so that's like a magical book in a book <laughs> and for that i have to go with the magical book in the light fantastic by terry pratchett you can kind of see it on the cover which my camera does not want to focus on, but that's a magical book. So this is the second book in the Discworld series. Um, I've always loved it. Um, it's the first one I actually read, and I think it's better than the actual first book in the Discworld series. So this series is kind of about the end of the world, basically. Uh, there's one wizard who can save the world, and of course it's Rincewind. And the reason he can save the world is because when he was a young wizard in An Ankh Morpork, he went into the library and he opened up a book he wasn't supposed to open that had one spell in it so he's a wizard who only knows one spell because when he read the spell it pushed out all the other spells in his mind and it took up his entire mind and he can't learn any other spells and now that one spell is the spell one spell out of that book is the thing that can save the world and he's a bumbling idiot and it's so good and it's such a just stupidly entertaining contrivance question five brew and or snack so this is just supposed to be like me as the bookish witchy reader um is supposed to share my favorite snack so my favorite snack is really easy i'm addicted to pirate's booty <laughs> um we had i tried this for the first time this past uh november during our like black friday sale we got a bag of it at the store and I fell in love with it. I became super addicted to it. Unfortunately, it's really expensive. And like, obviously, right now with the pandemic, I'm, I can't, I'm not going to the store at all. Because I don't need to. I can't justify going to the store just for pirate's booty, you know. Um, but man, I freaking love the stuff. It's so good. Who knew slightly cheesy flavored styrofoam could taste so delicious. But it does. Um, then my favorite drink is going to be tea or coffee I like both um I've been on a little bit more of a tea kick recently just because uh I I discovered I really have not I can't drink as much coffee as I used to or at least I can't while I was working like there's something about drinking coffee at work that made me really really like buzzy in a bad way so I started drinking tea at work which was so much better for me 
and I also started drinking herbal tea at night, which was really nice. I like that. So tea is more of like a comfort drink. Coffee is more of like a necessity drink because I do still have to drink a couple coffee, couple cups of coffee every day just so I don't get headaches and just to kind of like wake me up. I mean, I'm from the Pacific Northwest, South Seattle region. So like, what do you expect? <laughs> okay. And then question six, this is the last like info question, is to pick um, your familiar so it's um, talk about a favorite fictional animal that's like magical. Again, this one was really easy. Um, that's going to be the disreputable dog slash Mogget. But I think oh, I can't pick between the two of them. But we'll just say the disreputable dog and Mogget from the abortion series. So I picked Lirial because this is where this is the one that introduces the disreputable dog. And I wrote down the disreputable dog. But I also really love Mogget. This takes place several years after Sabriel and it is about Lirial. She is a member of the Claire who is this like special sect of four seers. And like they study the moon and stars and they have premonitions and stuff like that. And they are they work with like the kingdom, the chapter mages and the abortion. Um, Lirial is kind of old for a Claire who hasn't woken up with her second sight and she feels very alone in the clave and very out of place and she meets the disreputable dog who I can't remember if she creates the body of the disreputable dog. I'm almost sure she does. She like crafts the body of the disreputable dog, but then it becomes, it, it turns out to be way more than just like a magic made companion, which is what she crafted. Like it's been a little over a year since I read this. So I'm a little hazy on the details of where the disreputable dog came from. I know what it is. It's like way more than it meets the eye, but the disreputable dog can talk to her and it's her friend and it goes on adventures with her through all the craziness of this book and abortion and it is such a good character it's so entertaining it it's such a faithful good character who's also just a little bit it like gets her a little bit into trouble every now and again and it's just so good Mogget um was a character who was introduced in the first book and he's a free magic creature who's bound into the shape of a cat and he's a bit conniving and you're never really sure who he's really working for mostly himself but he's bound by the abortion's house um he and the disreputable dog have some really great interactions the two of them are fantastic in abortion i just love it love it love it love it i'm not a big animal person but i i genuinely love the disreputable dog and also Margaret. <laughs> okay so those are the six questions for the bookish witch tag. I hope you found those interesting. Um, obviously, I do read a lot of books with like magic, which is it's, it's, it's kind of a thing I kind of love. I am not going to tag anyone. That's question second, seven is to tag people. I'm not going to tag anyone because I don't know who's done this tag and who hasn't. But if you are, are watching this and uh, you feel bookishly witchy, um, and you like these questions, consider yourself tagged. Let me know you've done the video down below and I'll watch your video. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Happy Tag Tuesday. Man, I really hope I get this out on a Tuesday. And I'll see you guys in my next video.